الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا انفضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين رب شرح صدري ويسر لي أمري واحذر العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين Those of you that are familiar with the ayat probably recognize that I'm going to be talking about Surah Al-Jumu'ah today in this khutbah and these are the last few ayat of this beautiful surah we should appreciate the value of the Friday prayer because Allah Azza wa Jal of all, for the many reasons one of them is that Allah dedicated a surah of the Quran just to this topic, just to Jumu'ah. And the climax of that surah is its conclusion. At the end of it, the three ayat that are dedicated specifically for the subject matter of the Friday prayer. But I want to share with you not just what these ayat talk about. I want to remind myself and all of you that this is the ending of a conversation. So the Jumu'ah is a small surah. It's an altogether 11 ayat. And these are ayat number 9, 10, and 11. What's the conversation from the beginning of the surah? After all, the entire surah is called Surah Al Jumu'ah. And it's one khutbah, it's one speech of Allah. Azza wa Jal. And at the end of it all, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, ida nudiya bi salati min yawm al Jumu'ah, fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Those of you who claim to have faith, those of you who believe when, the, when it is called for from a part of the day of Friday, min yawm al Jumu'ah, min al Tabi'id, they say. It's a part of the day of Friday. There's a, you're not asked to give the entire Friday, you're asked to give a part of it. And that is Allah Azza wa Jal not just saying, إِذَا نُوْتِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ قَالْ مِنْ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ He says, مِنْ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ What that Allah is claiming here and emphasizing His favor on us because Allah says in the same surah, فَضْلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَهَا It's a favor of Allah. What is the favor of Allah? You don't have to give the whole day. Just give me a small part of this day. This can be a small part. And then Allah emphasizes Himself. And this is a big deal for us. Because if you and I start thinking coming to the Friday prayer is such a drag, man, I gotta come through traffic and make it here and then uh, get late getting back to work and I gotta make it up at the office then and all this other stuff. Well, Allah is saying, I'm not asking you a lot. Because previous nations were asked much more. We already know about the Bani Israel, they were asked the entire day. And it's no surprise that right before these ayat, the passage right before this one, is Bani Israel. The example of those who are burdened with the responsibility of Torah, the Torah, the previous revelation, and they didn't carry that responsibility. That's the, right before this passage is that passage. Allah Azza wa tells us the mistake of the Jewish community before who were given the responsibility before us. Then He talked to us. Then he talked to us. So it's a very interesting transition. This surah is broken up into three parts. It really only has three sections. There's the first section, which I'll talk to you about a little bit. There's a second section that I've already kind of alluded to. It talks about the Jews. 
It talks about Bani Israel. And there's the third and final section. It talks about Friday prayer. It talks about the Jumu'ah. So I want to, even though my khutbah really today with you is about this last part. I want to dedicate most of the little time I have with you to this last part. But I still want to walk you through a little bit to the first two, part, two parts. What is Allah Azza wa Jal talking about? The first passage, Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاءَ وَمَا فِي السَّمَاءَةِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. You know, this surah begins with the, one of the common ayat of tasbih. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاءَةِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ this is not the only place in the Qur'an Allah says that everything in the skies and the earth continues to and will continue to declare His perfection. It's not the only place Allah says that. But usually when Allah says this, He ends with two of His names. And usually you'll find in the ayat of Qur'an, ayat al madi they call them, the ayat of praising Allah Azza wa Jal, at the ends of many ayat of the Qur'an you find two of Allah's names. Ghafoorun Rahim, any of you who reads Quran, even if you don't know Arabic, you might have read Ghafoorun Rahim, Azizun Hakim. You might have heard these names before, Adimun Hakim. You'll find these names over and over again in the Quran. This unique ayah of four names of Allah, not two. Four names of Allah. It is making us remember Allah more. And guess what? Friday is the day of the week where we are supposed to remember Allah more. From the very beginning, the surah is setting us in the mind of remembering Allah more. Instead of two names, that's the case, normally the case, twice. Twice of that. SubhanAllah. But what are these names? Al-Malik, the king. Al-Quddus, the source of all purity. The sanctified. The one that has no pure impurities himself. And all things that are pure draw from his purity. So the first name was the king. And the second, that he's the source of all purity. And the third, Al-Aziz, the ultimate authority. Al-Aziz commonly gets translated as the mighty. In many translations of the Qur'an, they say the mighty. But actually, Al-Qawi is the mighty. Al-Qawi is actually the mighty. Al-Aziz, Izza, is a combination of two things. It's power and respect, authority and respect. Both, both those things. When someone has Izza, they have respect. And they also have authority. And they combine both of those things together. It is very hard for us to combine those things in the world today. Because there are people that have authority, but they don't have the respect of the people. They may have authority, but they don't have respect. Or they have respect, but unfortunately they have no authority. It's one or the other. But Izza combines both of those things. This is one of the names of Allah. Al-Aziz. Al-Hakim, the source of all wisdom. The first ayah goes on to praise Allah Azza wa Jal in four ways. And says everything else in the universe understands this. But then for these people, for the people, for human beings who are heedless, and among them the most heedless, al ummiyin that don't even have access to books. They don't even have access to literature. So there's a group of people that were living in the middle of the desert, surrounded by civilizations of literature. The Persians are a civilization of poetry and literature and philosophy. The Romans are a civilization, and the Greeks a, 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 a civilization of literature. You know, and a philosophy and mythology, all these kinds of stuff they have. What did the Arabs have? What, how did Allah characterize them Himself? Al Ummiyin. How are they even going to get to enlightenment? They don't even have access to books. They can't read most of them. They're Ummi unlettered. Allah says He sent a messenger among them, Rasul Minhum, Yatlu Alayhim Ayatihi, that narrates onto him his, his ayat, his, his miracles, his signs. I want to remind you of something. This is a long conversation. Again, I'm going to quickly walk you through these first few ayat. Because again, my focus is the end of the surah. But I want to share something very interesting with you. Back in the old days, the king used to live in the castle, used to live in the city, and he owns so much empire, so many villages and towns far away, he owns them. And he controls them. He doesn't go to give the announcement there. You know what he does? He sends one of his soldiers, sends them on a horse and they go to the village and they call all the people together from that village and then he opens up this paper this announcement from the king and he pronounces it onto the people this is and the people gather because they know this announcement is coming from the king any other announcement the people will not gather and if they don't gather they'll get in trouble because it was the king's it was the official announcement you have to show up that's how the society was organized, especially societies that were functioning under what? Kings. Allah Azza wa Jalla in the previous ayah mentioned his first name was that he is the king. 
And the first thing the Messenger does sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the next ayah is يَقْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He reads on to them his announcements, his pronouncements, his declarations, his ayat, his miracles. The next name of Allah mentioned was وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Oh, the, the name of Allah was Al-Quddus, the purifier. And the second thing mentioned about the Prophet is وَيُزَكِّيهِ He purifies them. Allah's name was the, the source of all purity, second name. And the second activity of the Prophet he purifies the people. How does he purify the people? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By reading the word of Allah onto them. The word of Allah is actually just listening to it, just understanding it, just paying attention to it, in and of itself cleans a human being. It's a cleansing process. And you know what? You can't clean your car once and, and it's going to be clean forever. You can't clean your house once and it's going to be clean forever. What happens naturally? Allah teaches us in the natural world. You leave something clean for a while, what comes on it? Dust. And you have to clean it again. And then it dust. And then clean it again. And dust. And you have to clean it again. And guess what? Human beings are just like that. Our souls are just like that. Our hearts are just like that. So you have to get the ayat recited onto you and me again. So we can be cleansed again. And then again. And then again. Over and over and over. Us coming together is a recognition of Allah's kingdom. When the king calls, you show up. It's Friday prayer. And then when you come, you also benefit because you get purified. You get clean. When you zakihim. When you alihuhum al kitaba wal hikmah, and he teaches them. He teaches them the law. Al kitab, not just book, it also means law. Kutiba alaykum, it was made law on you. The third name of Allah mentioned was Al Aziz, the authority. Where does law come from? It comes from the authority, doesn't it? And he said, Allah doesn't just say he teach them, teaches them the law, he says, Wal hikmah, and he teaches them wisdom. The fourth name of Allah mentioned in the previous ayah was Wal Hakim, Al Hakim, the wise. SubhanAllah. The four names of Allah are now brought into the people's lives by the Prophet with what he does. And in these four words, number one, number two, number three, and number four, these four things that are mentioned here in this beautiful ayah, they actually summarize the entire strategy of the Prophet on how to introduce God to humanity. This is what the Prophet did. You can summarize the entire seerah in this one ayah. This is it. This is the entire seerah. This is the entire life of the Prophet. The entire strategy on how to give people Islam. How to make society better. We read the seerah of the Prophet and we learn that that society was changed like no other society has ever changed. No society has ever changed like that society. They change from the top down and the bottom up, every way you look at it. Economically, socially, morally, when they, when they wake up, when they go to sleep, what they eat, what they love, what they hate, how they dress, how they go to the bathroom, for God's sake, everything changed. Everything changed. There's never been a change in society like that, ever in human history, like that. This surah tells us, how do you make that change happen? These, this ayah is about, how do you bring that change? How was the Messenger given وسلم, the ability to bring this kind of change in the people? And before this, this beautiful surah also has an announcement about us. The congregation of the Prophet وسلم, is full of the companions, but they're not in the hundreds of thousands. They're not in the hundreds of thousands. How many people attending Jumu'ah prayer today? Across the planet, across the country, across the state. My goodness, how many people are attending Jumu'ah? Allah says, <laughs> The word min is interesting here too, but without getting technical with you folks, Allah says there are other people that haven't joined them yet. And lama hafutaraji, they say, there's hope in it. Meaning they haven't joined the Muslims yet, but they will. The Prophet is told, you're going to have lots of people. You're going to have lots of followers. And we are a fulfillment of that promise. We sitting here are a fulfillment of that promise of Allah Azza wa Jal made to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, "Dalika Fatullah, look around you. Look to the Muslims sitting next to you and left of you, right of you. Look at the rows that's filling up. When I walked into the masjid, an hour ago, it was practically empty. 
There's one or two people here. Now it's filled up. You're, pretty soon people are not going to have a place to get in. They're going to have to put, pray by the shoes. We're going to have to make the announcement, move in closer, move in closer. And Allah says, look around you and remember, that is the favor of Allah. There are people I've met in this community, I see some familiar faces that moved to this community maybe, what, 30, 40 years ago? Couldn't find a Muslim for miles and miles. And when they stand today and make salat and they can't, you know, they see so many faces they don't know, and all of them people of La ilaha illallah, they should remind themselves, ذَلِكَ فَقُوا اللَّهِ فِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ This is the favor of Allah, there's no small thing. This is the first passage. How many passages? Three. This is the first passage. The second passage, Allah talks about the Jews. All of a sudden, Allah was just talking about us, the Muslims, the people that come together, the Prophet who purifies these people, and immediately it says, by the way, you're not the first people that were formed into a nation. Don't get to fool yourself. I made nations before too. And you know what? They had a book too. They had a messenger too. And the formula was never different. Is the manhaj of Musa alayhi salam also. It's not different. So Those who were burdened with the responsibility of Torah and they didn't carry it. They were given just like you. Your messenger gave you the book. They were given the book and they didn't just they didn't take it seriously. What is Allah telling us? Hey, just because you're gonna get somewhere, you're gonna have large numbers. Don't forget, if you don't take it seriously, then you will be just like the failures of the past. <laughs> like donkeys carrying loads of books. The books are there, but they don't benefit you. You don't even know what they have to say. They don't affect you. They don't purify you. You don't even listen to what it says. It's just sitting there on the shelf. And even if you read it, you don't connect it to your life. It's talking about old times. It's just stories that you're reading. It's not talking about me right now. SubhanAllah, don't become like those people. And you know what? I'm coming now to the, quickly trying to make my way to the last passage because I'm keeping track of time. But I want to share something very powerful with you that will help us understand that last passage. You see, when an ummah gets purified, it's like, like you know how you, you take your car to the car wash? This is a soul wash, Friday prayer. Right? When you bring it in for your soul wash, the heart gets cleaned up. And when the heart gets cleaned up, the heart is reminded that we are not here forever. You and I, one day, you know the announcement is made sometimes after Friday prayer, brothers and sisters, please stay back, there's a janazah. One day, that's going to be an announcement for you and me. And that's a reality. It's, it's going to happen. And we are reminded that this is not the only life there is, there's more. Our heart becomes content with that. People who don't believe, they don't like talking about death. You know what, they're scared about it. You talk about death a little bit, or I'll try to look at this and bro, can you change the subject? It's depressing, man. Let me live a little. But believers, when they hear about death, they're not scared of it. They're not depressed about it. They know this is a stop on the train. The next stop is death. The next stop after that is resurrection. It's a journey. This is just multiple stops. And they're reminded of that because you need a reminder of that. Otherwise the heart gets rusty. And if you don't get reminded, and your heart is not activated on a weekly basis, at least, you know what happens? Then you don't think about the next life. And if you don't think about the next life, the only life you think about is this one. And if this is the only life you think about, you would hate death. You would hate death. Allah says, Allah's Messenger says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, warning his companions, weakness will come upon you when what well, one of the causes of that great weakness the Ummah will suffer? One of them, karahiyatun mawud, hate of death. What disease did Allah describe with the Jews with in this particular passage? before the kuntum Why don't you wish for death? You people think you're going straight to Jannah? Why don't you wish for death? No, they'll never wish for it. Tell them the death you're running from will come and get you. Allah was talking to the Jews, but through talking to the Jews, He was talking to us. One, one, one of the great functions of Jumu'ah prayer is to remember where we're headed. And so now my last bit before I get to the final passage. My last bit is, there are three, I mean some of you know what simulations are, training exercises. Training exercises, mock exercises. There are three simulations for judgment day in the life of a Muslim. The first simulation is daily, salat. When you stand in front of God and you're not looking around, and you're only doing what you're told, that's like judgment day, because we're going to stand in front of Allah. And you're not going to look around then. 
And the only thing, وَقَالَ صَلَابًا He'll say the right thing. That's all he's going to say. Every salat is a reminder of what? Judgment day. The second reminder of judgment day is Friday prayer. Every week we gather. We come and you have to come. There's no, there's no, I don't know, I got some time. No, 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 you have to come. You better show up. And if you put that discipline in your life, I have to come to Friday prayer. I'm not going to be that guy who's parking outside. Because you know parking, once you park inside the parking lot, you can't get out soon enough. So you park two blocks over and take my time walking in because I don't hear the qira of Qur'an yet. I should at least catch the second rak'ah and make the head run and get out of here. No, no, no. You have the discipline of coming early. See, think, make attention to this seriously. Because man, I tell you, when the judgment day, when the call is made, it won't be the adhan, it will be sur. It's another kind of adhan. But when that is called, you're not going to be like, oh, let me just finish this meeting. No, 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 no. Then you're going to show up. This is training. The third big training, this is a weekly meeting training. Huh? There's a daily exercise, there's a weekly exercise. And there's a once in a life convention, it's called Hajj. Where you literally dress like you're about to be buried. You literally dress like you're about to be buried. And you go to the land of Arafah, where humanity will be gathered. Like it's the biggest exercise of Judgment Day. Our religious practices revolve around not forgetting death, not forgetting Judgment Day. This is one of the fundamental purposes of the Friday prayer. So you and I don't lose sight of why we're alive, why we're taking these breaths in and out. Now let's talk about this final passage. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, those of you who claim to believe, idha nudiya lis salati min yawmil jumu'ah, when the call is made from a, for a part of the day of Friday, fas'aw, then rush. Are you listening? Allah says rush. Ila dhikrillah, to remember Allah. Rush to the remembrance of Allah. Don't take your time. Rush. Watch your mouth. I gotta go. Come early. Come early. So you can tell Allah, Ya Allah, I listened to your word. I rushed. I rushed. A day will come when humanity will be rushing to Allah whether they like it or not. They will be rushing to Allah whether they like it or not. You and I better be from the people who rush to Allah because we like to. Because we were doing that even when we were alive in this world. That's what Jum'ah is supposed to be. Rush to Allah's remembrance. Listen to these words carefully, folks. Leave, leave sales. Allah did not say, leave business. And in the next ayat, Allah mentions tijara. He mentions that tijara means business. Allah didn't say leave business. He said leave sales. Why mention sales? People that are in business in the audience, you'll understand this. Business is made up of a lot of responsibilities. Business has employees, accounts receivable, taxes, rent, inventory. Business has, you have to keep, you have to keep track of you know, all the sales. You have to keep track of you know, the, you know, the, the, the invoices you haven't paid yet. There's all these parts to a business. There's so many things you've got to take care of. But people that are in business, they're always thinking. They're always like, oh my god, I forgot this. I forgot to file that. I forgot to send this. You know, customer service, so many things. But there is one part of business that makes it all worth it. This is one part of business. You hate writing the checks, the paychecks. You know, those of you that are employers, you work in, you own a store and you have employees. Friday comes, you have to write the check, right? Every time when you're signing the check, you feel bleeding in your ribs. And when you're cutting the check off the checkbook, you feel like somebody just did a root canal on you. It hurts, I know. It hurts. You feel the pain, you know. When the rent invoice comes for every month, I say, let me just put direct deposit so I don't feel the pain because it hurts too much to write the check. So it'll happen when I'm, while I'm sleeping, you know. <laughs> I'll get drained while I'm sleeping. It hurts. Expenses hurt. Business hurts. <coughs> taxes hurt. People hate taxes. And why? Because, you know, money's leaving your pocket. You work so hard to earn it, it's leaving. But when a customer walks in the door, oh, man. You know, I give an example. Some people own like 99 cent stores, right? And all these products they have in their store. But the poor guy bought a $500 thing and he put it there. Nobody's buying it. Nobody's buying it. He's stuck with this product. People come there for 99 cent products. The customer walks in at 12.30. No, no, no. One is Oklahoma, right? So 1.30. Customer walks into the store with his cart empty. And he's looking at the $500 product that's been sitting there for like a year. 
And the brother's like, Jamar time, Jamar time. But man, the customer's looking at, I don't know, maybe just a little bit. Let me wait a little bit. So the guy puts it in his cart. Oh man, this guy's, I don't know if I should, maybe I should just catch. Do they have a second Jamar? Do they catch that one? You know? The guy's going around shopping, stuffing the cart with things, and he's standing in line, and you have, sir, I have to close the store. No, it's going to be so hard for you to close the store. The juicy sale is right there. If you were writing the paychecks for your employees and Jamaa time came, you would leave a little extra early. Hey, Jamaa, okay? I'll do this later. But when it comes time to make it the sale, it's hard to leave. So Allah says, what I will say, leave the sale. Leave that juicy part. Leave it. And Allah Azza wa Jal tested the nation before us. They were told not to engage in business on Sabbath. Don't make money on Saturday. And the fish would literally jump out of the water, wink at them and say, hey, what's up? You want to catch me or what? And they wouldn't be able to touch them because it's Saturday. Shurra'an. Why? Because it's Saturday. It's juicy that day. I just, I was talking to a student who's in business. His biggest customer for the last 10 years, biggest customer, for 10 years in a row, he only calls him once a week and it's during Friday prayer. Every Friday prayer, he has a missed call from his biggest client. And the guy's been told multiple times that he can't help himself. And he has to miss a call from his most important customer every single week. Let me tell you, Allah will test you. Just stay a little bit later at the office. Let me just finish this. Let me just, let me just wrap this up. Let me, I gotta, you know, stop making excuses. Leave the sale. Leave the project. Leave it. This is the project. This is the sale. Come here. وَذَرُوا ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ That is better for you. إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ When prayer is done. فَانْتَ شِرُوفِنَ Then go out in the land. Go, have fun. Go. Go back to work. Do overtime. Go ahead. وَاتَّقُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Allah didn't even say then, go make money. Allah didn't say that. وَاكْسِبُوا Go earn. No, He said, وَاتَّقُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ He says, after you observe Allah's rights, now when you go back to make money, it's not even called money anymore, it's called Allah's favor. Meaning you'll have barakah in your money now. There'll be barakah in it now. Because you observed Allah's rights. This is Allah talking, guys. This is Allah talking. I know most of you walked in here while the khutbah is going on. And hopefully, hopefully, I can encourage you to feel a little bad. Then you can complain, but the khutbahs are boring. The Imam talks and when he says, Inna alhamdulillah, na'maduhu wa nasta'inuhu. Up in the salah, that's the next thing I hear. I pass out every week, that's why I don't come. Stop making excuses. You're not coming here to be entertained. You're coming here because Allah told you to come here. You're rushing here because Allah told you to rush here. Why are you still on your cell phone while Salat is going on? While Khutbah is going on? Why are you checking your text messages? Why are you on Facebook? What is wrong with you? Are you here to talk to a lot of the people? You know? I'm not even going to rant about the people that leave their ringtones on and they're too religious to turn them off when Salat is going on. If you're really not religious that you can't even put your hand in your pocket and turn it off, well you should have thought about not bringing your phone. Leave it in the car guys. Put it on airplane mode, put it on silent. We have those features now. If it's too much pain for you to turn it off, it hurts, because it's a part of your soul now, at least put it on plane mode. At least do that. But this is how oblivious we are to what a big thing this is. The Friday prayer. The surah came down about Jumu'ah. It came about this. And then Allah doesn't just say, come to Jumu'ah. Allah says you can get distracted easily. I'm over time, I'll take four minutes, I promise. I know I'm, I'm over time. I'll just exactly four minutes, inshallah. Thought I can finish my point. People get distracted. Even at the Prophet's time. Even at the Prophet's time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you can't complain, I get distracted, and I can't pay attention that long. I have a short attention span problem. When you're watching a football game on Sunday, you don't have an attention span problem, by the way. You know, somebody gets in the way of the TV screen for two seconds, like, hey, 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 get out of there. I'm trying to make, I'm having a sure right now. <laughs> you know, try to pay attention. When it comes to paying attention to a message, uh, it's hard. It's hard. And this even happened at the Prophet's time, alayhi salatu The Jumu'ah was outdoors, it wasn't behind closed doors. 
Wallahi, if it was open right now, over here, and you could look outside, some people have been staring out the window the entire 30 minutes I've been talking. Anything but here. Your mind should be anywhere but here. But imagine if it was open door, a car would drive by, 200 heads would just look at Because whatever else is there might be more interesting. Anything but this. That's what happens to us. A procession was going by, a trade fair was going, a carnival was going by. You know? And the some Sahaba saw it, and they didn't know the etiquette. They didn't know the manners of Jum'ah yet. So they ran off to it. Let me just see what's going on. Now some people go to that for business reasons. To car shows and exhibitions and computer expos and things like that. They go for business reasons. Most people don't go for business. Most people go, oh, hey, it's going to be fun. A lot of people there. Let's go hang out. Let's go see what's going to be there. So a crowd leaves the Prophet And Allah Azza wa makes this a permanent part of the Qur'an. He made this happen. So we could remember, look, distractions are going to be there. وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ تَرَكُوكَ إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا When they saw business or they saw any kind of entertainment, they ran off towards it and they left you standing there. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at where the surah began. The surah began, this messenger purifies you. He teaches you the book. He does so much for you. You are a blessed people because of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And not paying attention to the khutbah and being distra distracted, Allah de describes that as what? They left you standing by yourself. وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا They left you standing. Paying attention to the Friday prayer and giving it its rights is an act of loyalty to our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is an act of loyalty. Tell them whatever Allah has is better than your entertainment. It's better than your angry birds on your phone, okay? It's better than your Facebook updates. It's better than your tweets. Don't tweet, I'm in a khutbah right now. Don't do that. It's better than your entertainment. It's better than your business. Wallahu khayru raziqeen. And Allah is the best of all that, that can provide. You know, the state of the, the state of the ummah, the reason people don't care about the Friday prayer today, so the reason you, perhaps, haven't taken Jumu'ah seriously is maybe you didn't know how big a deal it is to Allah. But now you know it's on your conscience now. It's on you now. So next Friday, when you're going to walk in 30 minutes late, 20 minutes late, and you're going to be the last in, first out, accounting term LIFO, right? Last in, first out, then you, you deal with Allah yourself. Then you, that's on you. That's on you. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make us a people that rush to His remembrance, Amen. that fulfill the rites of the Jumu'ah. Ah. May Allah Azza wa Jalla accept all of our ibadat, all of our worship, with all of their shortcomings, and overlook all of the shortcomings that we have. May Allah Azza wa Jalla lift us as a people and raise the level of our awareness and cleanse our hearts by means of every single salah that we make. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al Hakim, wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al Hakim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقل الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتا